Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make your own, hopefully, infrared filter for the Mavic Pro. So, what I've done is I've gotten some deep indigo blue mylar. Now, I've had this stuff around. I'll see if I can find a link. If not, uh, I think if you search the internet, you, you can find this stuff. Now, what this does is this is going to cut everything from probably the 600s on down 600 nanometers and on down roughly in the spectrum so this is going to limit the light which is going to come into the sensor of the mavic pro to about 600 nanometers and above which is going to uh, bring us up into the um, uh, near infrared region for infrared photography and this is where you get the woods effect where you know uh, foliage looks white and things like that and you really get some of that neat effect now there's some other cool things about uh, infrared that a lot of folks don't realize is in infrared uh, and, and especially when you begin restricting the uh, band of light which is coming into the camera you're tightening up the focus because what happens is the different frequencies of light focus at different points so the wider the spectrum the softer the image is going to be where the narrower the band the sharper the image is going to be so you can do some really neat stuff and this is one of the reasons you can sort of um, in, in some cases with near infrared see-through clothes and things like that I don't really expect that to be the case here uh, but anyways I, what I do want to uh, try for is some unique effects with the drone now one of the things when I do this with a regular um, you know you know DLSR something like that camera um, I, I use probably about five of these in a longer exposure now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try starting out with around three of these because the more discs you put uh, in there because you notice I have several discs I've cut out with my co2 laser cutter and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second uh, the more attenuation you're going to get so or the less amount of light under that that threshold are, is going to be led into the camera and we want to minimize that as much as possible uh, uh, so I think somewhere between three to five of these should be good now what I have done with this mylar so I get a perfect circle is I've cut this on my co2 laser cutter and I'll have links below to um, you know if you're interested in getting a co2 laser cutter they're not that expensive they are a bit dangerous so be forewarned uh, but they allow you to do some very interesting stuff for example cut out perfect circles like this for optical grade material um, so anyways, that's what I've done here. I've actually attached the Mylar to a piece of poster board, put it in the laser cutter, drew up some circles in Inkscape, and cut them out. And they've actually been centered to the poster board a little bit. So if you have a laser printer, uh, sorry, not a laser printer, a laser cutter, and want to try this, um, the settings, I did this at about 50 millimeters a second at about 10 to 12 milliampers. Um, but anyways... I wanted to cut over to this now the other piece that I have done is you might remember I did a disassembly of these uh, or some cheap filters in the past and the reason I did that disassembly is I wanted to have an open filter like I have here because what the idea is is I've measured I'm having a hard time picking this up measured the inside uh, of this and I made this a little bit larger now one of the things you might ask why do I have a glove on nope I'm not going to break into singing Billie Jean or anything like that however this is a lint free glove I don't want to get any lint on these as I put them in nor fingerprints so I'm going to try to really do this kind of one handed and use an exacto knife to kind of peel up the back now I've cleaned the, I've cleaned this with a microfiber cloth um, before doing this and again this is centered down and part of that is actually pretty good because I did not want this to to, to kind of blow away with the fume extraction and then so what I'm going to do is just kind of set this in here like this and you'll notice how that just sets in there sits set sits in there really nice so that so I like that and again this is a very very deep blue so I'm gonna guess that this is going to be right around 560 to 600 uh, nanometers and so I'm just gonna lift this up and drop this one in here and I'm just gonna do one more um, 
and pop this up. And drop this guy in. And there you have it. So I'm going to get that moved around a little bit in there. Now it kind of fills up a little bit um, in there. Now remember these are loose. So I've got the gimbal guard on or gimbal lock. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this over top of here. And then boom, I now have an infrared filter on here. Uh, or hopefully an infrared capable filter. Now I'm going to have to take this out and try it and you'll have to stay tuned for another video but I kind of wanted to show the setup of this. So I'm going to try it with three. I'm going to see if it works. Now I can adjust the ISO a little bit uh, to adjust how the incoming light of the lower bandwidths affect it. So if I'm getting too much in, in, the, in the below 600 I can turn down the ISO and obviously that's going to reduce the sensitivity of the sensor and it's going to make that less prominent because that wavelength is being attenuated. So hopefully this all makes sense and if you have any questions hit me up in the comments below uh, because this is one of the things I'm really interested in doing is experimenting with new types of quote-unquote experimental filters. Um, I am going to go back uh, on my DIY3dtech.com channel. I attempted to cut a glass version of infrared filter unsuccessfully. I'm going to reattempt that. I've got some new glass in uh, to do that. But I, I figured this is easy. It's light. I wanted to experiment with it uh, back in the early days. And I'm talking almost 10 years ago when I got into... Um, IR photography, uh, IR filters were very, very expensive. And so that's where I actually got this. This this Mylar is actually about 10 years old. And I started out with this, and then uh, IR filters became more affordable. And so, um, you know, I switched to IR filters. But this is really lightweight. Um, the glass is actually very heavy and very thick, about twice the thickness of a normal um, Mavic filter and over twice as heavy. So I was afraid that I'm going to get some issues or have some issues with it on the camera. So that's where it kind of dawned on me. Well, let's go a little bit back retro and try the Mylar filter. Um, also, this is kind of nice too because it's not going to be such a stark infrared. So it gives me a little bit more to work with because what happens is is CCDs and CMOS sensors are very sensitive to infrared. So they usually put what's called a cut mirror or a hot mirror, basically that attenuates uh, near infrared. So it actually takes more infrared light to make it sensitive because of that filter. And this is kind of what we're fighting in this. And so, you, you know, you kind of have to find a middle of the road option unless you actually modify the camera. And I don't intend on doing this with the uh, Mavic. In addition, there are a lot of other type of filters. There's, um, you know, ultraviolet filters, near blue filters, all kinds of stuff that you can experiment with. And again, when you start changing the band of the filter uh, sorry the band of the wavelength of light coming in some very interesting things can happen and when you combine images and things like that um, you know you can do some interesting things for crop analysis ground analysis uh, you know again because we can get a sharper image with this than we can with the normal or without it because we're narrowing that band again uh, you can do some interesting things in discovering these things on the ground. I've seen, again, infrared used near infrared. Now, I want to back up and explain something here, probably worthwhile. So you have near infrared, which is, you know, comes in about 720 nanometers and goes up to probably about 970 nanometers, maybe a little bit higher. And then you have far infrared, which is heat range, which is way, 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 way out here. So the whole band of, of infrared is very, very big. And so I'm only talking about a sliver way down here near visible light uh, that's referred to typically as near. Far is more towards the heat range where you see with the FLIR cameras and things like that. So I just kind of wanted to clarify that. So you won't see heat with this. You'll see just simple, simply higher red images. So anyways, hopefully this was educational. You learned a little bit of something. Uh, we're going to go fly this uh, in an upcoming episode, and we're going to see how it works. And we'll come back and we'll talk about it. So anyways, cheers and see you guys in the next video.